Before we factor this trinomial, take a look at the terms. Each one is divisible by 2, so the entire polynomial has a greatest common factor of 2. What do I need to multiply by 2 to get 12y squared plus 10y minus 12? Now that I've done that, I can see there's nothing else common to all three of these terms, and I can carry on factoring it as before. The first step whenever you factor a trinomial should be to find the greatest common factor. Once you've found the greatest common factor, factor the remaining trinomial as normal. In this case, let's note our product and sum from here. We've already done part of the job of factoring this trinomial by factoring out this 2. So we just need to factor what's left. But because 2 is a factor, it's going to remain a factor in each of the next several steps as well. When I rewrite this trinomial with the middle term split up into 2, it's this trinomial that I'm going to be working on. The 2 just gets brought down. It does need to get brought down. Don't leave it off. It's part of the original expression. It's just in a different form now. Instead of being spread out through this trinomial, it's out front. Okay, so to rewrite this trinomial with the middle term split up, I first need to find the product of the first and last terms. 6 times negative 6 is negative 36. The sum I'm going to be aiming for is positive 5. What are the different ways that I can write negative 36 as a product of two numbers? Negative 1 times positive 36 is one way. Positive 1 times negative 36 is another. There are lots of others as well. But let's take a minute and figure out which configuration we're going to need. When I add these two together, I get positive 35. When I add these two together, I get negative 35. The sum I want is 5, not 35. But note that the positive sum comes from adding together a small negative and a large positive, not the other way around. So actually, I don't need any of the products where the large number is negative, only the ones where the small number is negative. So negative 1 times positive 36, negative 2 times positive 18, negative 3 times positive 12, negative 4 times positive 9, and negative 6 times positive 6. There's no 5 in there because 5 doesn't go into 36. Remember that you could find all of these products by typing y equals and then 36 divided by x, where x is from the xt theta n button on your calculator. Then second graph, because above the graph button is the table function. And this is actually what we're aiming for. The table will give you the values 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 6 and 6. It's up to you to figure out which one needs to be positive and which one needs to be negative. Ultimately, we need for when we add these two numbers together to find the pair that gives us positive 5. And here it is here. So in this case, this is the combination that works. So I can rewrite 5y as negative 4y plus 9y, or if you prefer, as plus 9y minus 4y. It doesn't matter which order they go in. Now that I've done that, I can carry on factoring by grouping, but I still have to write down the whole problem, even the part that I'm not actually working with at the moment. This is the trinomial that I'm factoring now, and here it is with its middle term split up. So these are the first two terms, 
and these are the last two terms from which I need to find a greatest common factor. What's common to both 6y squared and negative 4y? That would be 2y. And what's left over? 3y minus 2 because 2y times 3y is 6y squared and 2y times negative 2 is negative 4y. Now, what's common to both 9y and negative 6? That would be 3. And what's left over? 3y minus 2. This sign here is always going to end up just being brought down. We focused on that being the case when that was a minus, but it happens to be true when it's a plus as well. In the next step, I'm again going to write down the two times and just continue working inside these big brackets. The common factor to these two big terms now, this one and this one, is 3y minus 2. 3y minus 2 has been multiplied here by 2y and here by 3. What do I need to multiply 3y minus 2 by to get this term here? I need to multiply it by 2y. And what do I need to multiply 3y minus 2 by to get this whole term here? I need to multiply it by 3. Inside the big brackets here now I have this binomial times this binomial. And this product here is times 2. So at this point I don't really need these outside brackets anymore. They're not wrong. If you leave them there you won't lose any points. But just so that you can see it in a way that will match what your textbook will write, I'll rewrite this answer one more time. 2 times 3y minus 2 times 2y plus 3. This is the factored form of this trinomial. What if I'd asked you to factor this trinomial instead? Notice that it's the same as the one we had before, but there's an extra copy of y in each of the terms. So I have a common factor of 2 from all the numbers, but I have at least one copy of y in each of the terms as well. So 2 and y can both be pulled out front and undistributed from what's left. What's left is what I need to multiply by 2y to get the original expression. And that turns out to be the same as we had before. In other words, instead of just copying a 2 down in front of each step, I'm copying a 2y down. The answer I had was 3y minus 2 times 2y plus 3, in parentheses, times 2. But in this case, it's times 2y. The only difference between this problem and the one we did before was that there was an extra copy of y, an extra common factor. The common factor does not have to be just a number. It can be a letter or a variable as well. Let's do another one like that and see if we can spot it. This is question number 42 from your textbook. 10x to the fourth plus 7x cubed minus 12x squared. What do all three of these terms have in common? At first glance, it may appear as though they don't have anything in common. Nothing goes into 10 and 7 and 12, except for 1. But look at the variables. I have 4 copies here, 3 here, and 2 here. So I have at least 2 copies in each term. x squared times x squared is going to give me x to the fourth. x squared times x is going to give me x cubed. And x squared times 1. Will give me x squared. There's no number part to my greatest common factor, so all the number pieces are part of what's left over. 12 times 1 is 12. 
Now that I've found the greatest common factor, I need to factor this into this kind of factored form. I'll write down the greatest common factor so I don't forget it. It's still part of the expression. And then I'll do my work factoring the trinomial inside these parentheses. The first step in factoring a trinomial, once you've pulled out the greatest common factor, is to figure out what your product and sum are. My product is 10 times negative 12, negative 120. And my sum is 7. How can I write negative 120? Negative 1 times positive 120, or positive 1 times negative 120. This sum will give me a positive number, positive 119, and this sum will give me a negative 119. I want the positive sums. I don't care about any of the negative sums. I want these numbers to add up to a positive 7. So I actually don't need that version at all. All of my products can come from a small negative times a large positive. 120 can also be written as 2 times 60. I could write negative 2 times positive 60 or positive 2 times negative 60. But when I add together positive 2 and negative 60, I get a negative answer here. And I don't want that. I want a positive 7. So I'm only going to do negative small numbers times positive large numbers. It's getting harder for me to see what the numbers are, so I'm going to pull the calculator out. y equals 1, 2, 0 divided by x. Then second graph. There's one more down here that's not going to fit. Negative 10 times positive 12. The next one on my list is negative 12 times positive 10, but 12 times 10 is already accounted for here. Not only that, but that would give me a, a large negative number, and I, I said I only wanted the large positives. So now I need to add these up and look for the sum that matches this number here. There it is. This 7 matches this 7. This 7 came from here. Notice that once I found the, the number that was going to work for me and the pair of numbers that led to that number, I don't have to go find this sum. I don't care anymore. I found the pair of numbers that I need to finish this problem. In fact, you don't even need to write the whole list down. You could just write it arbitrarily until you stumble on a particular pair of numbers that gives you a product of negative 120 and a sum of positive 7. Sometimes this will be easier to do than others. But while this table constitutes showing your work, it's not absolutely mandatory. You can get these two numbers however you like. This is a very methodical way that will guarantee that if there is a solution to this particular question, what multiplies to negative 120 and adds to 7, guarantees that if there is a solution to that question, you'll be able to find it. Now that I've found my two numbers, negative 8 and 15, I need to rewrite 7x as negative 8x plus 15x. But I need the rest of my polynomial as well. 10x squared and minus 12. Now normally, I wouldn't encourage you to erase scratch work. It's always good to leave your scratch work as evidence of what you were thinking. But in this case, I'm running out of room. And since I can only work on this screen within a fixed amount of space, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my scratch work so that we can continue our problem. What's common to the first two terms here, and what's common to the second two terms? Well, let me rewrite the greatest common factor, and then what's common to the first two terms is 2 x. And what's left over 
is 5x minus 4, because 2x times 5x is 10x squared, and 2x times negative 4 is negative 8x. This sign just gets copied down. And then I can ask myself, what's common to the last two terms? What do 15x and negative 12 have in common? Well, that would be 3. And what's left over? 5x minus 4. Because 3 times 5x is 15x, and 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. I can see my greatest common factor for the next step. It's 5x minus 4. And what's left over is 2x plus 3. Notice that as I went from this step to this step this time, I left out the big brackets. That's because I know that when I go from this step to the next step, I'm going to be writing a product of one thing times a second thing times a third thing. And I don't need separating brackets anymore. Why did I need them in this line? That plus right there. As long as I have a sum of two things multiplied by something else, I need grouping symbols to keep my sum together. Once the sum was gone, at least in that form, I could drop the parentheses because I'm multiplying this times this times this. Within those factors, there are some sums or differences, but they already have parentheses around them. They're already grouped. This is my final answer. 10x to the fourth plus 7x cubed minus 12x squared can be written as x squared times the quantity 5x minus 4 times the quantity 2x plus 3. This problem from here down was no different from the problems we did in part A. The difference is that there's a new first step. And in fact, you should always look for the greatest common factor before factoring anything. We left that step out in the first few problems we did, the problems in part A, so that we could focus on learning how to factor. Factoring means rewriting an expression as a product of several things instead of as a sum of several things. If one of the factors happens to be something that's common to all of the terms in the original expression, well that's okay. But not only do we have to factor it out in order for this to be completely factored, but when we do pull it out, we turn the problem that we're working on into something much simpler, much smaller numbers, much smaller exponents. So Factoring out the greatest common factor is going to be to your advantage anyway. It'll make your work easier. Okay, here's one we can really sink our teeth into. What do these three terms have in common? Let's take one piece at a time. What number is a factor common to 12, 46, and 14? It turns out it's only 2. What's left over when I divide out a 2 is a 6, a 23, and a 7. If these had anything bigger in common, then pulling a 2 out would leave me with three numbers that still had something in common, and I'd be able to see it here. 7 and 23 are both prime, so these three numbers have nothing left in common. 2 is the greatest common factor. But that's just the numbers. What about the variables? And I have two variables here. Let's take a look at the x's first. How many copies of x do I have in common in all three terms? I have two copies here, I only have one copy here, and I have no copies of x here. So while x is common to these two terms, it's not present in this term at all. So it is not part of the greatest common factor. I'm not going to write an x here. Now let's look at the y's. There's one copy here, two here, and three here. I can only take out as many copies as I have in every single term. That means 
I can only take one copy out. When I undistribute this to see what's left, I'm asking what I need to multiply by this y to get this y here. And that's just times 1. Multiplying by 1 doesn't change the value of anything, so I don't need to write it down. All right, I've skipped some steps here because I wanted you to see what I was doing. What's left over when I identify the greatest common factor? 2y times what is 12x squared y? Well, the 2 times the 6 gives me the 12. There are no x's here to multiply by, so I need both copies here. And y times, we said it was 1, right? Times 1 doesn't need to be written down. Then I have a minus, and that makes sense too, because 2y times something is going to be equal to negative 46. Positive times a negative is what's going to give me this negative, so I need for this to be a negative as well. There's no x here to multiply by, so it has to come from here. And this y times y will give me this y squared. Double checking, 2 times negative 23 is negative 46. 1 times x is x, and y times y is y squared. Then I have a plus. 2 times 7 is 14. There are no x's here, but there are no x's here either. So I'm not multiplying by any x's to get my original term. y times, I need a y squared here to give me back my y cubed. So my greatest common factor is 2y. And now that I've factored it out, The trinomial that's left will be a lot easier to work with. I'll proceed as I always have, finding my product and my sum. My product is 6 times 7, which is 42. And my sum is negative 23. How can I build 42 as a product of two numbers? 1 times 42, 2 times 21, 3 times 14, 4 doesn't work, 5 doesn't work, 6 times 7. The next one that would work would be 7 times 6, but I've essentially already got that here. So I know I'm done finding ways to write 42 as a product of two numbers. What I need now, though, is the sum of the numbers in each row in this column. These add up to 43, these add up to 23, and that's as far as I need to go. I found the number I want. It's not actually quite right, but I'll show you how to fix that in a minute. My point in stopping here is that I could go on and say these add up to 17 and these add up to 13, but I don't care because I found the one I need. The problem I'm having is that while 2 and 21 add up to positive 23, the number I was actually looking for was negative 23. So I need to go back and look at how I might build positive 42 as the product of two numbers where the sum of those two numbers is a negative number. When you add two negative numbers, you're going to get an even bigger negative number. What I've done here is add up two positive numbers. Well, I was looking for 42, so that was a natural place to start. But notice that when you multiply two negative numbers, you get a positive number. So I really should have been doing a negative times a negative all along. It wasn't until I got to my sum that I realized I can get the right number, but I'm going to have to go back and figure out the sign. I need a positive 42 from my product, but I need the sum to be negative. To get a positive 42, I can either have a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative, and that's in fact what I needed to do. So, 
Now I have the two numbers that I need because a negative times a negative is a positive, but a negative plus a negative is an even bigger negative. So I can go back and rewrite my middle term. In addition to that though, I'm going to write down the 2y, the greatest common factor, copy down the first term, copy down the last term, and close the parentheses. And then all I need to do is go back and change this one term into its two parts. I have negative 2xy's and negative 21xy's. Because that's what my middle term here is made up of. Not just x's and not just y's, but xy's. I have 23, well, negative 23. But what I have 23 of is xy's. So when I split my middle term up, I need to split it up into some xy's and some more xy's. Now that it's in this form, I can factor by grouping, continuing to remember to write down my greatest common factor in front. What's common to these two terms? Let's see, 2 goes into both of these. There's at least one copy of x there and there. There's a second copy of x here, but there's not a second copy here. And there's a y in this term, but no y at all in this one. So my greatest common factor for these first two terms is just 2x. What's left over is 3x minus y, because 2x times 3x is 6x squared, and 2x times negative y is negative 2xy. Remember that the next step is just to bring this sign straight down. If this is a minus, then you put a minus here. And then I can ask, what's common to these two terms? What goes into 21 and 7? 7. What goes into x and, well, there's an x here, but not here. So if there's no x here, then it's certainly not common to both of these. So I can't write one down. There's one y here and two here. So there's one y common to both of these terms. What's left over is what I need to multiply by 7y to get 21xy. And what I need to multiply by 7y to get 7y squared. But it wasn't really 7y, was it? It was negative 7y. Here I'm getting a negative times a positive is a negative. And from this term I'm getting a negative times a negative is a positive. This minus sign right here is probably one of the biggest places where students make errors when learning how to factor. Now I can see what's common to these two big terms. But I'm not working in a vacuum here. I've got a, a bigger piece of the problem. I need to remember to bring down my greatest common factor from the first step. Then I have my greatest common factor from the inside, from the, bra from the brackets. And then I have what's left over, 2x minus 7y. Each of these problems has been a little bit more challenging than the one before it. The more practice you do, especially with the more basic problems, the more prepared you'll be to do the harder ones. While each one of these has had a slightly different element than the one before, I haven't done anything different. I've just applied the same procedures, the same sequence of steps, to more difficult problems. Factor out the GCF first, find the product of the first and last terms, and note that they need to add up to your middle term. Make a list of all the ways you can write your product and identify which one gives you your middle term when you add them up. Rewrite your trinomial with the middle term split into two using those numbers. Then factor by grouping. Find what's common to the first two terms, what's common to the last two terms. What's left over becomes your GCF inside the brackets. Then rewrite the problem one more time. Your outside greatest common factor from the first step, your inside greatest common factor from factoring by grouping, 
and the factor containing what's left over. And that's your answer. The first few problems that you'll do from this section are much simpler than this one. And in fact, now we're going to go back and do 6.2. The only difference there is that a in 6.2 will always be 1. So in fact, it should be easier than the ones we've been doing here. But the process is the same. 